blowing actually, but you probably see this in your practice and I see this in my practice, but there are 75 million Americans who suffer from chronic pain. That's unbelievable. Uh, and 80 million Americans have an autoimmune condition. That's really scary. And then 200 million Americans have a chronic disease that involves inflammation. So needless to say, we have an inflammation problem. And I don't think it's just in the US, but it's definitely predominant here. And we are reading, actually, even on the cover of Time magazine, I believe they had inflammation at the root cause of so many of our, our age-related diseases. So when you look at 200 million Americans have a chronic disease that involves inflammation, we're talking about heart disease, we're talking about dementia and Alzheimer's, we're talking about cancer, uh, we're talking about gut issues, any kind of gut issues of any kind, arthritis being a big one, right? Mm -hmm. Itises, I call them itises. So you, anything that ends in an itis means inflammation, <laughs> bursitis, yeah. arthritis, colitis, itis, itis, itis. So huge number of people that are dealing with inflammation. So I thought we'd dive into what can be some of the causes and then some solutions here uh, of what, what we can do to start to address this. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, can you repeat those stats uh, again? Yeah, seventy-five million Americans suffer from a chron from chronic pain. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously inflammation. Uh, Eighty million Americans have an autoimmune condition. That's everything from Hashimoto's to Crohn's. I mean, yeah. there's just all kinds of stuff there. Uh, Two hundred million Americans have a chronic disease that is involves inflammation. So the root cause being inflammation and then yeah. looking at chronic diseases when we're looking at arthritis and heart disease and dementia and diabetes and cancer and things like that. So the whole spectrum of dis-ease in the body, yeah. uh, root cause, root cause, a lot of it, I mean, science is showing this now over and over again, root cause being inflammation. So the reason why I wanted you to repeat those stats, because I was looking, I was Googling, what is the population of the U.S.? Uh -huh. And so the popu current population in the U.S. is 334 million. And you just said 200 million are suffering from some chronic inflammation. I think that's what you said. Yeah. Chronic disease. It involves inflammation. Chronic, yeah. Yeah. Chronic disease. So that's 60 percent. 60% of the U.S. population is suffering from a chronic disease. Yeah. That is. And then you said 80 million was suffering with uh, autoimmune, Auto I believe, right? Immune. Yeah. 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 So 24%, 24% of the population is suffering with autoimmune, which is caused by uh, inflammation. Right. Uh, and, but 60% of Americans, 60%, no wonder... We are, we have the, uh, the opi opioid crisis yes. because that's what, you know, years for how many 50, I don't know how many years we've been using opioids, even NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. All of those are to address inflammation because 60% of the population are inflamed. Yeah. And they're it's hurting. Isn't that yeah. wild? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and to get through your day, you're going to take a something, right? Because you're hurting and you sleep at night while you're hurting. So you can see why people self-medicate a lot with, especially non anti-inflammatories. That's a really big one. So let's well, kind of dive well, into, yeah. go ahead. One thing before you, because uh, I, I was telling you, I, I was on a podcast with another guy this morning at eight and he's from the, he was actually, he's actually from the UK. And one okay. of the questions he was asking me about, you know, acupuncture and so forth, but he was like, he made a comment. He said, yeah, you know, the U S is known for popping pills. That, oh. So that's how, that's how, you know, other people see the U S we are a country of popping pills. I thought that was pretty interesting. And then now you okay. give me the statistics and it's like, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. If popping pills was the was the answer, why is 60% of our population 
chronic disease, if popping pills, yeah. I want people to hear that if popping medication was the solution, like all this, you know, uh, I know it's not all physicians and, you know, I know it's drug companies, the drug companies are educating physicians to, to, to say that all these natural healing methods are, are a bunch of quack because right. they want people taking more medication and it's working because 60% of our population are suffering from chronic disorders and probably taking medication. So they just increased their market share. They increased their revenue. They're making trillions of dollars, you know, by making America sick. So I yeah. just thought that was interesting, the, but yeah, not to get off topic, but we can dive in, let's dive in. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, that, that's such a good point. So let's look at some of the things that cause inflammation. And I'm, I'm going to kind of go through a list here, and then I'm going to dive into some of these a little deeper. Gluten, we'll dive into that a little deeper. Leptins, uh, gut dysbiosis, so gut being uh, leaky gut, we've heard of that before. High blood sugar, We, you might even Google this right now. What is the percentage of the population that has di type 2 diabetes? So high blood sugar, a high toxic load in the body, which we we don't deal with well at all. We do not even address this at all. And then on the flip side of that is poor detoxification. So liver, kidney, uh, lymph system, stress. Most people don't correlate that with inflammation, but it's a huge, huge thing for inflammation. Poor sleep is another one. And then what you mentioned, pharmaceutical drugs. So non-steroidal anti-inflammatories actually give you or make you get leaky gut. So then it's this self-perpetuating problem. So those are some of the top ones that I that I came up with, but let's kind of go back and look at some of these a little more in depth. We talked about gluten a couple of times on the podcast, and we talked about when people go to Europe and they can eat the bread and stuff and they don't get any issues with it and they come back here. So that is because we hybridized our wheat, I think somewhere around the 1950s or so, and they got shorter and shorter. And what they did is they made the, the yield higher, but in doing that, they made the gluten higher. And I have some interesting information here that maybe folks haven't heard about before. There's something called amyl amylopectin A. Amylopectin A is a starch. So it's found in all your starchy foods and things, but the level of amyl Amylopectin A in wheat now is 60 to 70 percent of the wheat has this. It's a starch. It it was not like that prior to the hybridization. So this huge level of amylopectin A. Now I want to contrast that with a sweet potato because starches all have starches have this right. A sweet potato is 20 percent. So you have this starch that is in a massive amount in gluten. And then we also know that if you're not eating organic, it's heavily sprayed with glyphosate. So gluten is a, is a big issue. And, and in our programs, we, we really challenge people to go off of gluten, uh, either in our 10-day program or 28-day program, because a lot of people, they have to be challenged. We, we love our we gluten. Really challenge people to go off. Uh-oh, we're getting some feedback here. Oh, there sorry. Yeah, there That's you go. okay. Um, so do, uh, you may find this too, right? We, they want their bread and they want their bagel and they want their donut and they want their pasta. And then, you know, it's like, it's almost a psychological thing for them to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to give it up. You know, it's almost like they get stressed out about what am I going to eat? Yeah. <laughs> That's I hear clients say to me, what am I going to eat? You know, after I look at their food diary and they're eating sandwiches every day or cereal every morning for breakfast. So it's, it is something though you have to challenge yourself on. You have to go off it for long enough to know if you can lower the inflammation. I know personally for me, if I, like I just came back from vacation, right? And I'm with two boys, 13 and 16. I'm feeding them for a week. <laughs> they want, they want, uh, they wanted to make me French toast in the morning for breakfast. So I'm like, what, what's, what's grandma going to say? No, I don't want, you know, so I ate more gluten than I normally eat. And I came home in thumbs hurt, neck hurt, back. I'm inflamed from gluten. So I really notice the difference because I don't eat gluten on a regular basis. So you have to challenge yourself with this in order to know um, if it really is a problem for you. And for a lot of people it is. And I don't know about you, Jimmy, you know, I don't think you eat much gluten. 
Um, I don't eat it on a consistent basis. I mean, I don't intentionally, if I, if, if I'm at home, I don't eat it. The only time I will get it is when I'm going out and that's not, yeah. I don't intentionally go out to eat gluten. It's just in every food. Yeah. Yeah. It's in permeates everything. So that's yeah. a big one. I think this is a big uh, root cause of inflammation. The other one is lectins. So gluten has lectins. High lectin food is gluten or is wheat. Um, this isn't always a problem for everyone, but you're going to, you're going to find lectins in the nightshade family, which are the tomatoes and red bell peppers and green peppers and things like that. And so we do know there's a correlation between these and arthritis. And so again, some people can challenge, uh, you can just look nightshade vegetables up on the internet and see the nightshade vegetables and challenge and go off for 30 days and see if you notice the difference in inflammation. A lot of people do when it comes to the arthritis type pain. And so it's just, it just happens to be really high in lectin. So those are, those are as common as some of the foods, but let's talk about gut dys dysbiosis because this goes down this, all of this is we're talking about is food, right? So <laughs> we, we have a, co a country that has really a lot of gut issues. And there's not too many clients that I meet with that are have pain issues that don't have gut issues. And you have you have to do food first and then you got to heal the gut. So if you don't take the offending food away, you can take all the pills you want and it's not gonna, it's not gonna heal. It's gonna be a constant irritant to the gut. So let me talk about that just real briefly so people can understand a little bit what leaky gut is. So our gut should have a real tight juncture in it. When you, when you have 20, 22 feet of small intestine, that's a lot. So if you're in a room right now with 10 foot ceilings, you might want to look up there and go double that. And that's my intestine. <laughs> that's a lot of surface space. <laughs> yeah. So it needs to have tight junctions. So when the food's coming down and it's getting broken down by enzymes and you know your bile acids and your gallbladder and all this stuff, it needs to get into really tiny, tiny little molecules to go through the intestinal wall because the body is very wise. It won't let things in that it shouldn't come in. But when we eat foods that are damaging, and it could be it could be gluten, it could be lectin, it could be just junk food, right? <laughs> um, it starts to damage this intestinal wall and starts to open it up. And I and I liken it to like cheesecloth. If you've ever seen cheesecloth, there things go through, right? And now all of a sudden, this food is coming down and it's not completely broken down, and we have these large protein molecules getting through the intestinal wall into the bloodstream that sends off an immune response because the body identifies it as a foreign object. And what is the immune system? Inflammation. If you ever cut a finger, right? If you ever cut your finger, it gets red and swollen. It's healing, but it's inflamed, right? Because your body's response, inflammation is your immune system. You want your immune system to work, but you don't want it to be on overdrive all the time. And so this leaky gut can cause this constant inflammatory response in the body day in and day out, day in and day out. Hence autoimmune, right? So that immune system goes on for so long, years and years, and pretty soon is a tipping point where it doesn't shut off. It's just on all the time. Autoimmune is definitely correlated with leaky gut. So leaky gut is a huge part of the inflammatory process in the body. And I think there's a lot of that going on in our country. Any thoughts on that, Jimmy? Yeah, uh, before I get into that, so the statistic for diabetics is yeah. 37 million people, 37 Americans are diabetics. So that's okay. one in 10. So if you look at yourself and you get 10 other people, I mean, nine other people, one of y'all is a diabetic. And so yeah. that, you know, that, that is on the, on the rise. I have to actually, I'll Google what's the statistics about how fast that's growing, but in yeah. regards to, you know, the dysbiosis, everything occurs in the gut, everything, the root is the gut. This is why you know, uh, a lot of functional medicine practitioners are, they focus on the gut. Um, this has been around for it's nothing. It's actually nothing new. You know, when someone like me studied Chinese medicine, we knew that 3000, I mean, they knew that 3000 years ago, 
Um, it's just recently that technology is allowing um, or providing more evidence that there is such things as leaky gut, right? Before, you know, physicians would think there's no way you could have a leaky gut. Uh, but now there's technology because now there's labs. There's one of the labs, I remember, I believe it's a, a test for zonulin. Zonulin yeah. is one of the, it, it's like a, a glue. It's, a, it's like a, oh, what's a good the attachment? It, it's like you have two walls and it keeps those walls together. So it prevents things from, from uh, leaking out of the gut. And so there's a test where you can test the, I believe, something about zonulin, but basically it's just the attachment, right? So the, the point of me telling you this is not necessarily that you need to go get that test mm -hmm. because uh, it's a, it could be an expense. I don't know how, how, much, how much this costs. For me, not to get too far off, but tests are great. I love tests. I love lab tests. But there are some, you know, some people can go crazy with lab tests and it can be an enormous amount of money. Um, and all it's telling you is a problem that you already know you have. It doesn't help you fix the problem. So tests are adequate. I mean, are, are, are necessary, but you don't need to go crazy on it. So how do you know if you have leaky gut? You could get that test. And that's not a hundred proof, proof test. Uh, when you have... With any problems, if you have inflammation, we already know 60% of the Americans have inflammation. You have gut issues. If you have inflammation, you have gut issues, right? So yeah. always focus on your gut. doesn't matter if it, it makes no sense. If you have chronic pain, you have, you focus on your gut. Yes, it makes no sense because in Western medicine, we are taught, oh, the heart only is for pumping blood. It doesn't do anything else in your body. Oh, the pancreas, all it does is, is help regulate your blood sugar. It doesn't do anything else in your body. I mean, I went through the training and I went through you know, anatomy, physiology. We're taught like the body functions, the body doesn't function together. We are taught that the body, each organ functions by itself. It doesn't. I mean, yes, Western medicine is coming around to that, but a lot of the rejection of information is because of what we were taught in school. And so that's what I'm saying. If you have insomnia, focus on your gut. If yeah. you have migraines, focus on your gut. You got neuropathy, focus on your gut. It, it, here's, here's like, you know, we're, up, we're just g giving it to you straight. We're not, we're not saying, hey, oh, no, you got to do all these other things. Yes, you do. But the root is, hey, fix your gut because yeah. the gut is the only, our body is a closed system. I don't know if y'all know that. Our body is a closed, is mostly a closed system, but there's two, there's, there's actually a, what, one, two, three, four, five. There's a couple of, a couple of openings we have to the environment. A closed system means something outside cannot penetrate into our body without our consent, except for, I mean, and, and so what I mean by openings, like we breathe, that's an opening. That's an opening to the outside. We breathe in toxins. Same with our eyes. It, it goes into any in liquid. You know, even our ears, there's openings. And the most import, important opening that we have 100% control of is this opening. It's what we put in our mouth. So we are, we are putting all this toxin in our, in our, in our body. Yeah. We call it and it's food, right? So we are putting it. And because we are constantly every day we have to eat, we're putting toxins into our body that we think is food, but it's not really food that destroys the gut. So that's why I say, regardless of what problem you have, always focus on the gut. Yeah. Start with the gut. So true. And then that leads me into nostril and inflammatories because people are in pain and they take NSAIDs. And those things get, truly do damage the gut and give you leaky gut. So you're just amplifying the problem by taking these anti-inflammatories. So it's a, it's a self-perpetuating cycle. Very hard for f folks because they're, they're in pain. Uh, they want to work on their gut, but then they want to be lower, lower the pain. But what, what we've seen in our programs, and this is so fun, is because we asked for we asked for people to give us feedback right about 10 days in or so 
Oh, so many people say my pain has gone down so much. We hear that all the time, don't we, Jimmy? It's it's fantastic because you realize the power of food and, and how quickly the body wants to heal. So, you know, so I mentioned stress and I mentioned sleep, and we discuss that a lot in our programs because you have to stress. We know it's all, you can create an ulcer with stress. So our thoughts can make us very inflamed. And that's a huge thing that you have to get a hold of is somewhere in your day to stop the fight or flight, stop that uh, sympathetic nervous system and just shut the system down and give the body a break. And if we do that, then our body's going to sleep better. If we try to go to sleep, just coming right off a computer or an iPad or a cell phone, it ain't going to work. I mean, we were never designed to go to sit in front of a phone and then shut our eyes and say, oh, I want to go to sleep. You know, we were designed to rise with the sun and get that sun light in our eyes to start to make the serotonin, which makes the melatonin. And then we're designed to start to make the melatonin at night as the sun goes down and we shouldn't have all these lights on and all the blue lights on. And sleep is so important for healing the body and for lowering inflammation. So those are some really key things that we can't go into depth on here, but those are things that you were talking about toxicity, right? From the food and the air that we breathe and all these things and supporting the body systems, you know, the liver and the kidneys and the lymphatic system and all that to help the body detoxify the burden that the body's now carry in our world is, you know, if you go back a hundred years, we did not have plastics like we have, you know, we did, we don't have bottled water. <laughs> we, we didn't have the pesticides on our food. Like we have, it, it's changed dramatically in a hundred years. So our bodies are carrying a heavy toxic burden. And so we have to really support the body systems to detoxify on a daily basis. And, you know, so let's, let's talk about some solutions. We talk about all this bad stuff, right? <laughs> Let's give some solutions. So obviously food first. We just talked about that. Food is really crucial. Food first. So clean food. You know, a lot of people are on a budget for food. And now the, you know, the inflation food is getting very expensive and organic can be out of people's price range. So I always point people at the Environmental Working Group website, the ewg.org website, and get the uh, Dirty Dozen and the clean 15 list. So that every year they, they go through the fruits and vegetables and they pick out the dirtiest <laughs> ones, which is the dirty dozen, which are the most heavily sprayed. And then they do the clean 15, which are the ones that are least sprayed, the ones that you can probably buy non-organic, and especially like an avocado, let's say for instance, is, non, is a, on the clean 15. Thick skin, right? So you don't have to worry too much about anything that's penetrating. So that helps the budget. But try to at least avoid the dirty dozen and make sure you buy those organic. Those are those are the really top ones you want to buy organic. If you can't afford organic, then make sure that you're cleaning and washing. I know I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna go into what can do that. Maybe we can do that on another podcast, but there are some things you can do to help get some of the pesticides off peeling. If you need to peel, you can peel. So food first and then low inflammatory diet. What is a low inflammatory diet? <laughs> well, we know that getting the gluten out and the high lectin foods is probably a real crucial thing to start with. And then lowering the sugar in the diet because sugar is very acidic. Uh, sugar, sugar makes us very inflamed. And so a lower sugar diet, a lower starch diet, like I mentioned, the, the, the amylopectin A in the wheat being 60 to 70% of that starch versus the sweet potato, 20%. So move towards the plants for your starches and versus the grains. You're going you're gonna to really notice a difference coming off the grains, I think. And initially, you don't need to stay away from forever. But initially to heal the gut and to lower the inflammation, it's really good to focus on starches from your plants and your fruits and then stick with your clean proteins. And you can do legumes and things like that. Dairy is another thing that can be very inflammatory. Uh, it's not so much lactose as it is the way they process the dairy. So back to that leaky guts kind of scenario here, it, homogenization, when they homogenize that milk, what they're doing is they're breaking those protein particles down into really, really tiny little protein. So they mix with the milk fat so you don't get the fat floating to the top. 
And guess what that does? It doesn't, it gets right through that intestinal wall. It doesn't have to be digested. So again, those molecules of homogenized dairy get into the bloodstream and send off all kinds of alarms all over the body. So oftentimes folks can do dairy challenges as well and take the dairy out for 30 days and see how they do. And again, it's not that you never can have it again. It's just that it wouldn't be a daily. Uh, some people, we had somebody in our group this last um we, she, she's still in there and still going through it. And she said, I thought I would just die not having my cheese. <laughs> but then she said, I, you know, I realized after about four or five days, I'm, I'm okay. And, you know, so again, a lot of times it's up here because she was eating cheese every day. Uh, obviously heal your gut. We talked about that and in, in sleep and lowering your stress and lowering your toxic load on the body. And that is everything that you're breathing, eating and slathering on your body. <laughs> <laughs> so you talked about our bodies being a, a pretty much a closed system. Well, one of the largest organs we have is our skin. And when you put toxic skincare on, or you're putting in those air freshener plugins in your wall, breathing that in, all of this stuff builds up in the system. So it's really important to make your environment uh, more clean and and I we don't use any scents in our laundry detergent. We don't use dryer sheets. Uh, you know we don't use plugins in the wall. We use an essential oil diffuser. So our environment in our home, we're still going to get outgassing from paint. We're going to get it from furniture. But if you can do the toxic load burden, if you can lessen it from the things you have control over, like you said, Jimmy then try to move away from these things and give your body a break because these things are causing a lot of a lot of uh inflammation in the body your body's have they're foreign subjects right they're foreign things so your body has to respond to this stuff whether it be food water or the air that you're breathing or the stuff you're slathering on your skin so that's a lot i just dumped on you <laughs> um we do go through this in our courses a little bit more in depth because we want people to really get it and understand it, how important it is, and to take baby steps. Whatever it is you feel like, okay, maybe I should unplug those plug freshener or something, take a baby step and help your body to lower inflammation because it is the root cause of so much of our disease. Yeah, there was a, uh, there's a couple of couple of points I wanted to point out. So in regards to like scents and smells and, 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 uh, what's in your, in the air, there was a, you can Google this on YouTube. Uh, there was a, I think he was like an environmental person living in LA and they use some device to measure the quality of the air. And so they, they measure the quality of the air of, of someone's home. Like they just went to someone's home and kept the windows closed and just measure the quality of the air. And then they went to downtown LA. You know, downtown LA is known to be polluted, right? And so they measure the quality there. And the result was shocking. The, you, you know, most people think, oh, because the LA is so polluted that the air quality outside will be more terrible, more toxic than inside the house. It was actually the opposite. We use so many sprays, chemicals, scents, we are actually breathing that stuff in into in, when we're at home and we're when we're sleeping, we're sucking it in. So yeah. you're, the inside, the quality of your the air inside your house actually is more toxic. And so when I went to uh, visit my in laws when they when they lived in China, one thing that that I noticed that they do, and also my I would I think I remember when I was young, my aunts would do is they would always open up the windows in the morning. They would air out, you know, the house. And, yeah. and, and even if it's like 30 degrees outside, they're still opening the windows. It's like crazy. But now <laughs> I understand why, because they're trying to get all of that toxic chemicals from the air outside, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's one thing that I wanted to. Uh, the second thing was organic food, right? It's a yeah. myth. It's a myth that organic food is expensive. Now, if you're com if you're com if you're comparing conventional apple to organic apple, yes, when you're comparing like that, it is expensive. But actually, you will save money eating 100% organic. So my wife and I, when we first got married, uh, you know, we had a lot of debt and we didn't have a lot of money. 
but we knew the importance of our health. So in the in the beginning, we ate, we started eating 100% organic. I would say probably a few years after we got married, we switched to 100% organic. And what we found out was our grocery bills decreased by 50% when we ate 100% organic. Now, you're probably wondering, how is that possible? Well, when you eat 100% organic, you don't buy all the crap. It's those (laughs) processed foods that cost a lot of money. And the second thing, when you eat organic, you get full faster, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's real food. It's Mm -hmm. closer to real food. Mm-hmm. And so we may say, so we've been married, you know, 22 years and we, and you may think, oh, okay, that's back then 20 years ago. Well, right now, you know, I've mentioned in our, in our Facebook post, I am going, I am doing part of our, uh, 28 day metabolic reset. So my wife and I, we're doing that right now. So what we're eating is we are going back to eating 100% organic. Uh, I mean, we, we, we always eat organic, uh, but we, what we focus on is, you know, following the 28 day program and really eating just those foods. And again, our grocery bill doesn't matter inflation. Yes, inflation is happening, but guess what? Our grocery bill dropped in a half again. We've been doing this for the past four weeks, actually three weeks. So we've been eating that way. And I've been, you know, people that are in our private Facebook group, I've been putting pictures of what I've eating and you can see the quantity is not a lot. Right. Yeah. I weigh yeah. I weigh about 160 pounds and you can see what I'm eating is mm-hmm. very little compared to what you think I sh- w- would be eating. And the reason why I'm eating so little, number one, is a principle of eating only 80 percent full. That's mm-hmm. one principle that I'm following. And number two, I'm eating 100 percent organic. And so the proof, my, my point of sharing all this is that our grocery bill just cut by 50 percent again. Uh, so we were buying some stuff that wasn't 100% organic. And so, you know, we all make the mistakes, but eating organic is not expensive. It's actually l- l- uh, less expensive uh, than, than what you think. And, and I, okay. And I think to your point is that packaged and, and canned and processed food is very expensive. And the one thing I'll mention here is don't get hooked into the gluten-free foods. Yeah. <laughs> if you go gluten, don't just don't. I mean, they're terribly expensive and they're loaded with, you know, more refined starches and everything than everything. And they still have preservatives and sugar in them. So don't go down that road. Just eat real food. Uh, you know, eat your fruits and your vegetables and your proteins and your legumes and your nuts and your seeds. And y- yeah, you won't be spending a lot of money on packaged food. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I'll answer this one question that one person asked. What if you don't have a gallbladder? Will this affect the gut more? Absolutely, it will. You you were born. God did not give us extra organs. Okay. <laughs> so I mean, actually, I take that back. My wife's aunt was given three kidneys, oh but the goodness. third one, yeah, she got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> but the third one wasn't functioning. But she was she was blessed with with extra organs. But most of us, yeah, we we, we God gave us the, the, all the organs we need. So when we start removing stuff, removing organs that God gave to us, there's going to become problems. Now I understand, you know, when you have gallstones and it could be life-threatening, I'm not saying don't remove your organs. I'm just saying when that happens, yes, it creates more work for your other organs, more specifically your liver, right? It overworks your liver. Now it's a fact. You don't have a gallbladder. There are things that you can do. There are things yeah. that you can do to, to uh, uh, overcome that, right? And uh, obviously, we're out of time already today, uh, but that's the benefit of, of joining one of our programs. And when you join one of our programs, you get, you're able to get into our private Facebook group, and we can dive deeper into your questions in that group. That's one of the values that Chris and I, you know, we promise to give whoever, you know, invests in one of our programs we are going to invest our, our time uh, to answer your questions. And yeah. talking about a program, I want to introduce everybody. We, Chris and I are doing our very first webinar. This is going to be August the 7th. We are going to do a webinar. It's going to probably be about an hour, an hour and a half. And for those of y'all who are looking to lose weight, 
Um, you've tried everything. We're actually going to tackle that. We're going to go over all the different types of weight loss, uh, why it's why some work, why most don't work. And then we're going to reveal what's really the real solution if you want permanent weight loss. So that's going to be August the 7th. You, you got to be following us. Stay on our social media feed. We'll give you the time. I don't think we've determined the time yet, but the date is August the 7th. So mark it on your calendar and continue to watch our post. Uh, we, will, we will announce the uh, time of the webinar uh, very shortly. So yeah, Chris, you just if, if, yeah, I think if you just register, uh, we'll get an email out to you and give you reminders yeah. and stuff. Too. Yeah. yeah. So we'll put the, the link to where you can register uh, under this podcast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's just let's just kind of take a deep breath here. We talked about a lot of stuff today and we know that inflammation is a huge problem. So again, baby steps work just decide. I love the root uh, word for decision in the Greek it means to cut off decision. Right. And mm -hmm. when you make a decision, let's say you make a decision to lower your sugar intake it's a cutting off you don't look back it's not like lot's wife when she looked back and turned to salt so you're just right you stay forward right um so you decide this is my lifestyle from this point forward this is not a quick fix this is not a short-term thing i'm going to do this and this is how i'm going to live my life decisions are very very powerful you know all of our outcomes in our life are based on decisions that we make and this couldn't be a better decision so just pick pick one of the things we talked about whether it's working on your gut you know whether it's lowering your blood sugars you know by lowering your sugar count whatever it is make a decision because this is your life you guys inflammation can destroy your life and so we want to help you if we can you know you can go to our divine farmer health page and look at all the programs we have but we're we're super excited about this webinar because i think we're going to really dive into some interesting stuff on weight loss because that's that's a huge topic yeah yeah all right guys that's going to be it for today. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you again next week. Yeah. Same time, same channel, uh, Facebook. Not, we had to move it back to the Facebook. But same time, same time, Thursdays at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. All right, guys, we will see y'all next week.